Hi, Adam Bazalgette, two-time PGA Teacher of the Year Award down here in Florida. Today I want to talk to you about the swing of Jason Duffner, so stay tuned. Okay, Jason Duffner, one of the really consistent and excellent players on the PGA Tour in the last few years. Simple motion, as you'll see. Uh, and I think there's a few things we can learn from it. So at the end of the video, the, the end of the analysis, I'm going to come back and show you a couple of drills and a couple of things I think you might benefit from. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button. That's helpful to me. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Love to get you more of this free content that will be coming your way. Uh, and I'm the founder of Scratch Golf Academy, so lots of video programs there you might want to check out. But let's have a look at Jason Duffner. Okay, so let's have a look at Jason swinging the club here. We'll look from a couple of angles. It's a very simple, compact motion, no wasted movement in there. He's a very, very consistent ball striker and a very straight hitter of the ball. And when I get back in front of the camera, I'll talk a little bit about not only what you can learn from it, but what kind of body styles likely are going to work for this swing. So here he goes. A nice little trademark waggle. We've all seen that. For whatever reason, that certainly seems to keep him loose. He stays in motion. You can tell he's not too stiff in those wrists or he wouldn't be able to do that. And here's the first thing I notice about his motion is his club really responds to his body. He's got a little bump to his back leg, but you can see it almost becomes a little bit more of a convex angle there concave, I should say, as he starts back, and the club's almost dragging. So the body dominates it. Once he's back to about here, the wrists kind of snap into action, but there's really no leftover arm swing at all. And as he's finishing his backswing, he's already making his transition with his lower body. Hallmark of great players, but it's very pronounced here with Jason. So just watch his body in this area, and as he finishes that backswing, he's already moving forward. And you can see, as just as he was loose of those wrists at the beginning, they stay nice and loose, and they load well there. And he just makes a strong turn through it, makes a good rip at it with his right side there. He lets his right wrist and arm really straighten out and snap through, but it's in conjunction with the release of that right hip and right side as he goes through. So very simple swing. Let's have a look from this angle. He tends to get bent over pretty far, gets his hands fairly low, a lot of times, just the actual act of getting your hands that low, his hands are probably, his clubs pointed below his belt buckle, will tend to slightly push you over the ball. So that's possibly what's happening there. But it's a good sharp posture. And again, from this angle, we'll see those hands are very passive. The club's literally staying over here and dragging uh, you know, in front of his hands. Now, once he picks up speed, his wrists start to snap into action there. And I think it's more the momentum of the club snapping there rather than him deliberately cocking his wrists. And he has that very compact kind of a look for his arms. It is rare that you will see a great player hitting a full shot where if you profile their shirt, their arms are within that profile. Normally they'll have enough length of arm swing, you'll see a little bit of a window that you would see here, but you'll see that up above their shoulder. So very compact swing. Uh, you've got to love the simple one plane kind of a look there, uh, but you need, as I'll show you later, you need a pretty flexible right arm to do that the way he's doing that, not a or flexible right shoulder as well. So he whips it back, he's on one plane. Again, I want you to notice one of the really good things about his swing is he's already changing direction with his lower body before he's completely finished going back. So that completes that feeling where his arms respond to his body there, club picks up momentum and sets, and then before his arms have run off, he's changing direction with that lower body. Just pulls his head back a little bit, probably because his posture is pretty bent over. Hips stay in a great spot, and like all great players, as he's hitting the ball, you can really see a lot of his back. Uh, and that's a sign, again, his body's working well, and it really frees him up to release down the target line, and through he goes. So nice, simple, simple swing there from Jason Duffner. Let's talk a little bit about it. Okay, so you can see some of the great things, the simplicity of Jason's swing. Now, in order to apply those to you, you really need to be relatively flexible, and you need to have some body speed. You need to have some strength and speed in your body. Uh, if you don't feel like you can create much speed in your body, maybe you're getting a little bit older, you might need a little bit longer backswing than that to really make it work. But it's awfully simple if you feel like you have some strength and speed. You'll also need 
a flexible pair of wrists. You need a pair of wrists that will hinge the club fully and freely. Of course, you need a grip that will allow you to do that. Uh, and finally, when we'll look in a minute from the plane here, to get your right arm where his is, I'm going to suggest to you, if you can't stand there and rotate your elbow back, rotate your forearm back pretty far, you'll notice my body's vertical, I'm beyond vertical with my forearm there, you just don't have a flexible enough elbow and shoulder to do that. Now you could still make a flat swing, but you're going to have to let your right arm give and get a little bit more behind you there. So let's get into it. The two main things I think you can take away from that swing. One of them I love and I stress in a lot of the videos, if you've watched some of the videos I've done, really like this factor and that is the golf club and the arms respond to the body. And you get this kind of two-way motion. It's like loading a whip or a towel and it is very, very repeatable. I promise you, once you start snatching the club back and moving the club head in a manner that isn't originating from your core, it, you can do it, but it's difficult to be consistent. So here's what I would suggest to try to mimic this. Set up stance a little bit more narrow. We're just, this is a seven arm. We're just going to hit a fairly small shot. And practice that feeling where as you engage yourself, the weight of the club is so passive to you that it almost slightly causes your wrist to go concave. You'll see that in some of the great players of yesteryear. Bobby Jones certainly comes into mind. Ben Hogan a little bit there. And get used to that feeling of moving your body this way. Now, once you've moved and your arms and club are starting to pick up some momentum, then you can let the weight of the club snap past your wrists. And I kind of phrase it that way. I don't think you want to get here and then suddenly decide you want to cock your wrists. They should be mobile enough that once you're in motion, you sort of sense the weight of the club sling back. Here's the key, and this is a big one. Once you've moved, once you've pivoted, and you start to sense the club head really picking up speed, in a smooth fashion, just go ahead and change direction. That will increase your wrist cock and galvanize that downswing. So you can just hit some little short shots, rehearse the takeaway. Once it starts to snap into motion, just go ahead and change direction like that. It's a great practice habit, even if your intention isn't to make a swing that small and short. Now from this angle over here, what we want to feel like, I think, if you're a right-handed golfer and a right-hander by nature, which is typical for a right-hander, if you could feel that feeling of like carrying a pizza tray, and I realize that would actually be horizontal, but a little bit of that image at any rate, even though the pizza would slide off, you're going to need some flexibility in your arm. And once you've made that initial drag, snap it right into that spot like that. Nice little pizza tray feeling snap it into that spot and go. And you'll find this club will create a very consistent, shallow sort of a plane. So I hope those ideas are good for you. Again, if you like the video, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit the like button. Love you to subscribe to the channel. We'll be getting more of this free content coming your way. My host site is scratchgolfacademy.com. There's all sorts of materials there that might be of interest to you. Thanks for your time.